Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Red Docket Projections. My name is Lucas. I have Eric here with me. Hey guys. And today we'll be taking a look at the 2020 presidential election and we'll be looking at uh, the Republicans specifically who A, have endorsed Joe Biden already, B, have stated they will not be voting for Donald Trump, or C, um, have not made a comment on it and are, you know, kind of quote unquote struggling to do so. Uh, with that being said, let's get right into it. So we have a New York Times article pulled up here, uh, very nice title here. Um, we'll be looking at most of these people individually seeing who will not be um, supporting at the moment uh, Donald Trump for president. So if you all remember last year, uh, most of the Republicans did endorse um, Donald Trump. Some notable exceptions were Jeb Bush, John Kasich, who actually voted for John McCain, and um, George W. Bush. So we'll be taking a look at some of these people. Um, I think the first big name we need to discuss here is Secretary of State, former Secretary of State under George W. Bush, Colin Powell. For those of you that don't know, um, Colin Powell served from um, 2001 to uh, somewhere, somewhere in George W. Bush's term, but um, he has this pretty big name recognition. In 2016, actually, there were three faithless electors in the state of Washington that voted for Colin Powell instead of um, the person who won that state, um, Hillary Clinton. But what's interesting about uh, Colin Powell is that he actually did endorse Democrats before. Um, he endorsed Obama as well as Hillary Clinton in 2016, which is a pretty interesting thing about. Um, I feel like Colin Powell is not really that partisan, if that makes sense. Uh, if you see that he's you know, kind of endorsing some of the Democrats and voting for them, um, that's pretty interesting to take a look at uh, because usually people vote by their party. But Colin Powell is a Republican, but he does seem to be you know, going to the other side sometimes. So uh, that's pretty interesting to think about. Now we have Senator Mitt Romney of Utah, um, who also was the 2012 presidential election candidate for the Republicans. Eric, why don't you talk about him? Yes, yeah, so uh, Mitt, Romney, Rip, Mitt Romney is uh, ran against Barack Obama in 2012. He did lose, but um, he is known as a moderate Republican. He and Donald Trump are not on the best of terms, even being two Republicans. Romney was one of the few Republicans that voted um, for impeachment. Am I correct? Yes, he did vote for impeachment. He is, in fact, the only, only senator, Republican. Yep. Yeah, only senator in the history of the United States to vote for him to convict um, the president um, of their own party. He voted against. Uh, he, I'm sorry. He voted for convicting the president on the first article. Uh, but not the second one. So yeah, they're not on the best of terms, and they were there were a lot of Twitter wars before that as well on various little minor topics. So it doesn't come to a surprise to me that um, Mitt Romney is not in support of Trump or not endorsing Trump or anything like that, and showing more support for Biden because Donald Trump is kind of an outlier uh, for some of the Republican. Um, party. So, uh, yeah, that, that will not look good for him if members of his own party are turning on him. Um, something, yeah, something interesting about Romney, I do think he is more of that um, not, like, always supporting his party type of thing. We discussed him voting no on a, uh, voting yes for convicting the president. Um, yeah, I think Romney's definitely going to be an interesting one. Um, I do think that he did vote for Donald Trump in 2016. Uh, in, uh, yeah, 2016, if, I, if I'm remembering that correctly, but I do believe he did do that. Um, I feel like Mitt Romney's the kind of person that more cares about his own thoughts than like what his people think, because his uh, approval ratings did plummet after uh, voting uh, yes to impeachment. So it's kind of interesting to look, look at. Um, that's not really that good to do in politics, because... Uh, they can easily vote you out. <laughs> no, honestly, but, um, I think his approval, of, approval ratings dropped when people saw how he blew out candles. But anyways, we, we can move on. Yeah, and I do want to mention something else pretty interesting that also proves that he's kind of more in the middle type of thing. 
Um, when he was governor of Massachusetts, he did uh, either try to pass or did pass a version of like the Obamacare uh, Act. The four books. All right, let's head to Cindy McCain now, who is the widow of former Senator John McCain. Um, I don't see. I don't think this is a really big surprise. Um, I was pretty much expecting this to happen anyway, um, saying that he would, she would not vote for um, President Trump um, because uh, John McCain was again the senator from Arizona, as well as the 2008 Republican nominee for president. Um, he and President Trump have had a very shaky relationship. Uh, it's not so great. Uh, there, I can come up with a few instances. Um, first of all, when John McCain passed away, um, he did not wish um, for the president to attend his funeral, instead inviting um, the vice president, Vice President Pence, to come instead. Another example I can think of is in um, 2016, uh, while he was on the campaign trail, uh, Trump made some controversial comments regarding um, John McCain being a quote-unquote war hero. Um, that's up for debate somewhere else, but um, it did cause, you know, kind of rift between their relationship. And the third one I can think of is um, John McCain uh, voted no on the plan to repeal, uh, the bill to repeal uh, o Obamacare, which obviously the Republicans, like uh, President Trump, wanted to repeal. Uh, that did not happen. Um, and he was the sole vote that decided that. So there was a very shaky relationship between the two of them. Uh, to putting that into account, I do think that Cindy McCain not endorsing President Trump, as well as almost being almost certain to support Mr. Biden, um, is pretty interesting to think about. Um, again, this is kind of crossing party lines here. So I, I, I'm not surprised here. Yes. Yeah, so um, let's move on to President George Bush uh, Jr., um, he was um, a moderate Republican. He uh -huh. he served two terms because um, you know more moderate politicians do get kind of more support for not taking a side. That's that could be controversial, and they he also does not align with um, Donald Trump's views too much. So he's not gonna support him for re-election, which. It is said in the article. Now Lucas will move on to his brother, Jeb Bush, governor of um, which state? Florida. Yes, he was Florida, the governor former Florida. governor of Florida a pretty long time ago, 2000. I'm not surprised to hear about Jeb Bush not endorsing either. He didn't endorse in 2016 either. Um, now, the reason why I, I think Jeb has been having you know this kind of issue with uh, Trump is they, they have been having a lot of disputes um, if you guys remember back in the 2016 election, oh my gosh, the debates were pretty feisty between the two of them. Um, obviously, that's going to be a riff, and uh, Jeb is more, more moderate than um, President Trump is, so it also makes sense why he wouldn't be endorsing him either. Uh, Jeb isn't sure how he'll vote, but um, I don't, if you want my guess, I don't think he's going to vote for um, Joe Biden either. Um, my guess is that he's probably going to write in a name. Same with uh, former President Bush. Um, yeah, it's just kind of this, this relationship issue. Uh, politics is all about relationships. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I, I'm not surprised by this decision. All righty. Um, let's talk about, um, let's talk about some other people that are, might not, not be on this list. Uh, let's talk about possible ones. Lisa Murkowski of Alaska. Uh, she is one of the more moderate Democrats. She came out with a statement a few days ago saying that something about the GOP party. Um, you know, this kind of makes me think um, maybe she won't endorse Trump in 2020. I'm not completely sure, but it, it does make you start to think, are they going to endorse them or not? After that statement, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Um, with Lisa Murkowski put aside, now let's talk about Paul Ryan and John Boehner. These two are uh, prominent Republicans. Um, John Paul Ryan was the previous Speaker of the House before Nancy Pelosi and before his retirement. And before that was John Boehner of Ohio. Uh, yeah, Paul Ryan's from Wisconsin. Um, I'll talk about Paul Ryan here. Um, Paul Ryan... Uh, claims that he retired in 2017 because he wanted to spend more time with his family. <sighs> I'm going to be honest. I don't think that's the main reason why. I think there is a deeper reason. And to be honest, I think what that deeper reason is, it has to do with the president. 
Um, I don't think that their views have like exactly aligned the past few and their, their relationship has been kind of rough. So I think he did that to kind of find a reason why and like kind of say why he wants to resign. Um, he, but yeah, that's my assumption. He tried to be all smiles during Trump's State of the Union with that very memorable smile. But deep inside, yeah, it, it wasn't working out. So I don't think Paul Ryan is in support and will, will not support him in the 2020 election. Right. He hasn't made a comment publicly yet, um, but he is kind of struggling to endorse because, you know, many of the GOPs have already endorsed the president already. Uh, John Boehner is also another surprising one here. Um, I actually, I'm not sure, actually. John Boehner, I think, maybe will endorse him, but it's kind of surprising that you have two speakers not endorsing, um, or two former speakers not endorsing the president. Um, that's kind of interesting to think about, part of the same party. Yeah, generally, I don't know. It's pretty interesting, um, John Boehner. Um, let's see, was there any other ones? Hmm. Do you want to talk about James Mattis or? Oh, yes. James Mattis is a important one. Um, Eric, why don't you talk about him? Let's, let me give some background first. He was essentially the former uh, Secretary of Defense before he resigned, um, citing issues with the president regarding, was it Syria? I think it was pulling troops out of Syria. Mm -hmm. um, he is an independent, um, but he was uh, serving as the um, De Secretary of Defense under Trump. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh... Lucas, as Lucas said, James Madison, Donald Trump were kind of disagreeing on multiple things, which is a recurring pattern with uh, many of these Republicans that don't support him, obviously. So as a defense secretary, if you don't agree with uh, the president, that causes problems. And they're most likely some memorable ones, um, especially on the topic of uh, the controversial topic of pulling troops out of Syria. So... It, this also does not come as a surprise to me that he does not support Donald Trump. Um, yeah. He did make a statement a few days ago about Donald Trump, um, saying that he called him a divider. He's like kind of said, like, um, this is kind of paraphrasing, I'm not remembering it exactly, but he said something about presidents usually are the ones that unite the country and uh, President Trump is dividing it. Again, that's up to people's interpretations. But that is kind of interesting because we are seeing this kind of riff again between someone who worked for his administration and now is pulled out and is no longer working. Uh, that does remind me that James Comey, is that his name? Yeah, James Comey, um, mm -hmm. FBI, yep. former FBI director that was fired by um, Trump. I saw that he was also um, endorsing, not endorsing, but um, he, I, wait, I think he might have been. I think he did endorse Joe Biden for president. Um, yes, uh, the former FBI director, James Comey, has endorsed uh, Joe Biden for president. Although he has a declared affiliation, um, he has been a registered Republican. So that is another interesting one. I don't find that surprising either, considering their breaking down relationship um, after he was fired. Now, I, I do want to, I think that's all the people there. I do want to discuss what the possible effects of this, of these prominent uh, GOP leaders, not really leaders, but GOP uh, politicians, politicians, yes, not endorsing President Trump. Because, you know, some of these are big names. John Boehner, Paul Ryan, um, a lot of people wife. Might, McCain's wife, yes. A lot of people might be following what they kind of did. Um, Colin Powell, even Colin Powell, although he has been, you know, flip-flopping. Um, and especially someone like George Bush. And I know there's a bunch of Jeb Bush supporters, too, that also um, kind of follow his lead, especially if you supported him in the 2016 election, you might be following what he's doing. So um, although people might not necessarily be voting for Joe Biden as a result of this, I do think maybe it's going to cause some people to stay home or maybe even do a write-in vote or cast their vote for a third party. That would be definitely really interesting. And Mitt Romney, too. Um, He's pretty popular now in Utah uh, after the impeachment uh, vote, which he voted yes for. Um, so some people might be following their lead because these are prominent, pretty prominent names. So I think this is pretty interesting to take a look at. Um, this is kind of a different type of episode than we usually do, but it, this was something important that we need to take a look at um, mm -hmm. for today. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. If you like this episode, please hit the like button. Um, if you like our content, please hit subscribe. We'll see you in our next episode tomorrow.
Et euh, 